everyone uh, welcome back to the tutorials on arc pro uh, this next video is going to be one of the first um, that though it is uh, about arc pro is actively trying to show uh, some of the differences between how we would use tools in arc pro and how we would use them in, in desktop um, you know, versus the first three videos were really about, um, you know, the, the interface and some, some more novel concepts. The concepts I discuss in this video and, um, you know, those that are similar to it will largely have been concepts that longtime viewers of the channel may uh, be able to see and find in somewhat greater detail on the ARC desktop uh, videos. Um, you know, we'll go into some detail here, but uh, a lot of what we'll be talking about here is, is how to sort of translate those over into Arc Pro. And so whenever I do these sorts of videos, I'll make sure to label that accordingly and start them just by showing that what we're going to do here, for example, um, is really going to be, for users of the channel, a replication <clears throat> of the creating spatial and non-spatial data uh, toolkit. And in particular, we're going to be looking at how you edit in Arc Pro, how you geo-reference in Arc Pro, and how you plot XY coordinates. Uh, the concepts of all three identical, right? The creation and saving of new shape files, uh, geo-referencing, how you take an image uh, that doesn't know where it is in the world and locate it exactly where it needs to be, and plotting XY, obviously how you take XY data and get it into ArcGIS. Um, these other three ArcScan won't really review. Creating geodatabases, there's really no difference. Right click the catalog and you can create it. Um, and the you know hierarchies and the way you play with geodatabases would remain uh, identical once you've actually created it. So that's just some small muscle memory you'd have to relearn. Uh, but the other three have slight differences that are novel enough that I want to review them. So um, you know we can start with the plotting uh, XY coordinate. That's a, a roughly a pretty easy one to, to learn. Um, so we're going to find my data here. I've got a map. Um, and I brought in some uh, you know artists that live in Philadelphia. I think we've used this in a previous video. And it has their data stored in, in a couple ways. So remember, any time you are doing XY data, your first step is to understand the units in which the coordinates are saved depending on who created you, the map or the table, someone may have depicted their units like Y-min and X-min in feet, right? They may have been created in a map that was projected in feet, and then whoever calculated those coordinates depicted them as the coordinates from the central points of that foot coordinate. So that's going to depend where you are in the U.S., uh, you know, or another country that uses feet. They could also be in meters, right? They could be in yards, they could be in miles. Commonly, you'll see them in decimal degrees, right? Those are the ones that run between negative 180 and 180, and then 90 and negative 90 uh, on the y-axis. And you just need to get a sense of what those are because similar to how you set up the tool in desktop, you'll need to just sort of inform uh, Arc Pro the units because it, it doesn't know right it has no idea when it's looking at this if that's a decimal degree or not it's just a random number of numbers to it so you've got to let it know the muscle memory is very similar grab your table right click it display the XY data or you can find that in a toolbox as well you could go to analysis tools geoprocessing XY table to point but I as many viewers know am a major right click fan what am I doing? Where is it going to? Where right, you can choose to save it however you want. You know, I'll save it as uh, export, or sorry, uh, point export. And it's going to want to know your X and your Y field. So I'll start with the X max and the Y max that are in decimal degrees. And so then I need to make sure that I'm picking a coordinate system that is, right? So nice thing about this is a lot easier. It'll give you sort of the coordinate systems that you have at your disposal. Um, based on the, you know, what kind of maps are here on the page, right? So I've got my, um, you know, World Geographic Service, which is for the, the, the current map, and then I could pick the, uh, you know, Neighborhoods Crime Population, which happens to be 
projected in feet. So if I do it in this, which I know will recognize the decimal degrees, right? Anytime you do um, the GCS, WGS, or any other geographic coordinate system and run it, it'll take a quick second. And then after it runs, you should see a couple of points pop up here on the screen. And there they are, bing, bada, boom, bada, boom. We've got our points where they're supposed to be with all of the information that they brought with them. Again, I could do it with the feet, you know, X min and Y min. But I just need to make sure then, since they're in feet, that I'm telling it, hey, use the reference system from something like that, right? And I know that because I could right-click it and see that, yes, it's projected in the Pennsylvania State Claim Coordinate System, and its units are in feet. And therefore, it's going to recognize that those are feet. And so I could save feet and run it. And hopefully, I didn't make a boo-boo or an error there. Everything should be glorious. And it will, uh, you know, plot for us. And you can see the difference about running uh, pure XY versus running feet. Um, you know, again, this, what we're seeing here is in my opinion, probably one of the only few flaws of um, Arc Pro uh, because it's it's consistently linked to online resources. It can be a little bit slower sometimes if the bandwidth is down. Um, but in later videos, we will show uh, how you work with your maps offline, you know, so you can see how to uh, obviate that problem to a little bit. Okay, so that's XY. So now we'll move on to the creation uh, of a shapefile. So you could... Uh, create a geodatabase if you wanted to. Right? Remember your project folder that you created in the beginning is always going to have its own geodatabase. You could come in here and make a feature class just like you would normally in Arc Desktop. Uh, but I want to show you how to make a shapefile first because the um, the the skills necessary are not necessarily as easy or, or maybe I'm framing that wrong. But there's no right click, is I suppose what I mean. Uh, you know, normally in the old videos, I would tell you anytime you want to make something new, anytime you want to create a new uh, shape file or a new um, you know, database or address locator, that right clicking a folder within here is how you would do it. But that's not the case here, right? There's some things you can create to your databases, toolboxes. LiDAR data sets, but there's others you simply can't, right? You can't actually just create a shape file in a folder anymore through a right click, which means you need a new muscle memory for Pro, um, which achieves the same thing and is a tool that's available in desktop. Uh, we've just always taken the shortcut. So in order to edit, remember you, um, you know, unless you want to edit a file that exists, if you want to edit something new, you need to create that new file, right? It doesn't exist. If I want to just start drawing shapes and I want it to be in a totally new file, uh, that file isn't here yet, and so I need to make it uh, be here. So I'd go to Analysis, pick Tools, I choose my toolboxes. It's in uh, Data Management under Features, or sorry, Feature Class. Should be one that says Create Feature Class. So there we go, create feature class. I would choose where I'd want to save it, you know, so I'll come down and I'll save it to um, this class folder. And I'll call it new feature. Does it want to be a point a line or a polygon, right? You'll choose there. Um, if there's a, a template that has, you know, the, the schema for how to apply the attributes that you've created, you'd put it. Uh, coordinate system, again, nice and easy. I know that I want it to be the same as my map here, Neighborhood Crime, so I'll pick it. And I could give it an alias if I want it. Right, so nothing novel about what you're inputting for the editing there. The muscle memory just looks different. So give it a moment, it's going to run, and there it is, right? It's loaded uh, something that's new feature onto my map. Um, obviously, there isn't anything here. Right? There's nothing yet been created. Um, you know, what I do want to do, though, is I want to add some, some kind of fields to it. And this will give me a chance, I think, to show you uh, another area where it's a little bit different in uh, Arc Pro. So the reason I'm going to add fields, if you'll remember, one of the, um, maybe it's a, 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 a very good reason for this. And so me saying the word flaw is inappropriate. But you know, I've always seen it as somewhat of a flaw that you can't actually create new columns, right, new attributes, at the same time you're creating new rows 
which are features in a shape file. Um, you'll notice this in desktop. Anytime you're editing, the ability to add a field has been removed from you. And so I want to make sure we're adding them first uh, so that we don't run into that problem. So I'm going to open the attribute table just so I can show you what this looks like. I'm going to drag it so that it's uh, floating. And, uh, you know, you can access this in a, in a couple of ways, right? By looking at my attribute table, I can right here add a field. I can add, um, oh, no, that's adding a new row. I can add a field right here, right? new attribute, new column to the three I have, FID, shape, and ID. Or I could break this window open, which is one of the, the cool new views of Arc Pro, which is called Fields, and I could do it from here. Right, so either way, even if I were to click Add, it's going to bring me to this menu right here, which is a way of visualizing your fields in a new way. Right, it's very clean, it's very easy. It tells you the name, if it's visible, can people edit it, what does it look like when I see it in the data set, what's its alias, the type that it is, right? and format if you wanted to make something look like it was currency for example and then how long the scale and the length so right if you wanted to add something new you'd simply click here we maybe call it my text field All right give it an alias of text field uh, we'd want it to be text All right keep moving doesn't necessarily need a numeric format and the length will be 255 characters now Anytime you're editing or adding fields, notice, right, because the way Pro looks from an interface point of view is to mimic the Microsoft applications, you'll kind of see that every time you go to like a new thing, like adding a field or making a new shape file, your view at the top is going to change. And you should always pause to investigate what new options have been given you regardless of what video you're watching or what assignment you're doing. In this case, it'll help you realize that like the two big changes you get when you're looking at fields, right, are you going to add a new field or more importantly, you save. If you were to just X out of this, that field wouldn't save, right? So you need to come up here and hit save. That's a little different than, um, than desktop where like you'd add a field and then that field is there until you choose to delete it. So there it is. We've added our new field. Bing, bada, boom. Now we can kind of edit it in our data as needed, and we can see there it is, text field. Last thing here, I could delete it if I wanted. I have all the options that we'll review in other videos, but now it's good to go. All right, so my fields have been created. So now let's start drawing new features, and it's a little bit easier. I mean, here you would right-click, right, and you would find something called Edit, and go to Edit, and it would create an editor window. Here you literally click on the edit button. It's one of the main ones that's up here. And the moment you do it, it immediately puts you into a editor window. Um, we can kind of ignore these for right now. They're a little bit more detailed. But we can see some of the main concepts that we've seen before. Turn on the rules about what can snap. This is what we're going to click on in just a second that's going to allow us essentially to modify existing features or create new features. You can select while you're doing this so that you can easily do the uh, clips and the buffers and the merges. And these are all those specific tools that you'll recognize before. Merge, split, right? Scale, vertices, move to, replace geometries. Maybe perhaps in some of these are new, we might have a, a video uh, in a week or two, an advanced video that walks through some of the kind of newer concepts. But today we'll just demonstrate some of the ones that we've used previously in the past. Um, and then ultimately you have something over here that, uh, you know, a little bit more advanced will allow you to create sort of automatic tools uh, that let you know kind of any errors that have been made while you're editing data. But for now, we don't need to do that. So, create is what allows you to know you're going to start, tells you anything that's available to you create. And there you go. Whenever you click on something, you'll get the options, right, of what you want to do. Hey, you want to be a polygon. You want to be an autocomplete polygon. You want to be an angle, right? You want to be a circle. The same kinds of concepts you had previously. And it all functions the same, right? You point and click and point and click and double click when you're done. You have similar kind of tools here. If I wanted to make this and turn it into a arc, I could do that and I'd have myself a nice little arc and I could go back to my line here, double click, 
Similar options available to you by right clicking, right? If I were to right click on that shape, I could say, hey, become parallel to that shape or perpendicular or deflect yourself off that shape. And there you go. Now I'm parallel to it. I can move as far as I want in any direction, but I can't break the angle of that line. Um, right? Similar concepts of, of each of those. If you want to move it, you grab it and move it. Right, move the shape and because you can do that right it'll give you kind of those quick options you want to rotate the shape you can rotate the shape you can make it bigger you can make it smaller your choice or right, you also can do sort of the same tools you could do previously in arc if I take these two and I select them I can merge gonna ask me hey which two you want to merge new feature new feature merge these two that are selected and there they are merged right it's so another thing that's a little different is every kind of new tool you click on whether you're gonna edit the vertices or whatnot you're gonna be given um, you know in the most cases a little thing here with a little more detail that you might need to know right this one's just telling you hey those vertices you're playing with what are the absolute X and Y coordinates and you can see sort of as I change them the appropriate one on the coordinate list down here would change as well Right, all good, all stuff that we've sort of seen before uh, when playing with these, um, you know, data sets. Nothing too big, nothing too new, nothing too kind of radical about what we've done in the past. Um, you know, so you can play and you can sort of learn these. Uh, entering attributes can be done in a couple of different ways. You know, so the first thing, if I click on something, uh, what it's going to give me um, is the option, or at least theoretically, I thought it would. Um, but yeah, you click on it and go to the attributes, and it should pop up right here. And so that's where I can control them, right here if I wanted to. So, you know, blah, blah, blah is my text. And hit enter. Um, you know, I could find a, a traditionalist and I want it to look like it did an arc. I could open the whole attribute table if I need to do and have it down here and, you know, put text in this way, this way as well. Doesn't matter, whatever works easiest you. Um, so the last big thing though is is over here, right? Notice that we've got our save and our discard. That's no different uh, than in in desktop. You can't just leave this or the shapes will disappear. You need to come up and you need to hit save. It'll give you the option and by doing that these are now officially part of my shape files and notice that I would again now have the ability if I wanted to right to add field right so you can float in and out of your editing uh, you know concept really easily muscle memory is a bit different but the tools are all roughly the same um, so I'll conclude this video then with the uh, lesson on arc scan or on sorry on geo referencing so um, mostly a little similar but just kinda wanna show you the mechanics right if you remember um, uh, arc uh, geo referencing the purpose is that you can take um, you can take and then I'm gonna make my map projected world coordinate system really quick so it's easier to see what I'm gonna do so right you can drag in um, any raster that you want literally you can drag in a picture of your favorite musician you know, and it'll show it, but it's not going to show it really in any meaningful place because there's no um, coordinate or geographic information attached to it. It's just a picture. But like we learned in um, in desktop, there is a way to move it with something called geo referencing. So it's in the imagery toolbar, which we'll return to occasionally throughout these pro videos. And there's actually one here called georeferencing. So you get many of the same um, uh, you know, tools that we had before. I'm going to just turn off the auto apply really quick uh, just to kind of have it and, and then sort of walk through. So this one will fit it to be the size of the display. You can move, rotate, and scale it as you needed. You know, right? So I could take it and rotate it. Uh, oops. Take my rotate and rotate it slightly theoretically if this would stop bothering me there we go. I could rotate it slightly at an angle if I needed to I could make it bigger or smaller at any of those things uh, that you might need to do uh, you could flip it you know you could turn it on its side 
Um, this is a new concept that we hadn't have seen before uh, called um, auto georeference. So this is something I haven't yet 100% learned or mastered. When I get to that point, we'll have a special video. So this will be another one of those kind of sort of special concept videos for this advanced tips in pro. But what it allows you to do is it allows you to, as long as you have two satellite images, which we don't have here, that are regularly uh, similar, it can actually look for similarities in the sort of shapes in, in the topographical design and the raster imagery so that it automatically lines something up where it's supposed to be. Um, you know, same way you can control in the other video, as I mentioned, the type of transformation. We won't go into all of these, but if you want to uh, look on ArcGIS online or the desktop references or resources, they'll walk you through the math about how things are going to try to move and, and switch it around. I think you can keep it at first polynomial for now. And then other than that, really what you're doing is you're simply adding control points. Right? I mean, you can add any number of the ones you want. I'm only going to do a few here, but I could click here. Theoretically. Sorry, add control points. So I could add from here, and then I'll just keep kind of zooming maybe to the, uh, the view of the USA. You know, and I'll... This is, again, going to be way less accurate than what I had done previously for one of these, and I could keep linking. So I linked you, and then I would jump back to my map, and maybe I'll link Florida. So from here, now we'll go back to the U.S., And we'll link Florida. Notice you can see the other control point that I set previously is there. Again, I'm not going to be super accurate here. I'll probably just put one more uh, for convenience sake, maybe up near Maine. Um, okay, thank you. And then we'll put one up here near Maine. And then same thing, we'll go right back to the topographic map. Put it up near Maine. I think that's where I put it. Anyway, all right, so normally you would do far more points, 20, 30, 40, 50, or more. You'd want it to be really sort of um, been solid. And then when you feel like you're good to go, you would hit apply. And what would happen is, right, the map would shift, and it would transform to be in this area. Now, again, if you're doing this for real, you want far more points so it knows how to twist and conform itself very accurately. There's only doing three, so it's not going to be right, a perfect match, obviously, if I were to turn it on or off, but it is largely in line with where it's supposed to be uh, kind of in the world for the most part. So then when you're done, you either want to save it uh, or you'd save it as kind of a new one. You know, I, I, saving it sometimes easier. Um, and then you would close your georeferencing. And then that way, anytime you bring this layer in in the future, um, it's going to know exactly where it's supposed to go in the world. So that is plotting XY coordinates, editing, and geo-referencing in Pro. Concepts are not different really in any meaningful way, just a couple of new muscle memory tricks you need to learn to master the same skills.